we're talking about when we talk about circular economy it's a very complex issue what we're talking about is a system-wide transition um, this and this is not just to happen in the EU within our borders but this is actually a global transition that is needed it's really interesting to look at what's happened in the last few years and what we've seen there in terms of development of the circular economy is that we had very strong policy at first to show leadership and direction and then industry came on board really quickly and various different sizes of businesses started transforming, started getting ahead of the policy in many cases. And so I think the transition has been driven from industry and from the business sector but the benefits reap across all of society. We do have a garbage problem worldwide and this is a very, very big problem and uh, yeah, we are more than willing to react on that, to react as machine builders, to find new solutions, new processes, new products and uh, do this not alone but uh, do this with all the players in the market. We need to, at a European level and a national, regional level to remove all obstacles, to create the condition for that to become really the, uh, the choice. Uh, regulatory obstacles subsist already, of course, <laughs> but uh, there are also incentive and economic uh, incentives that needs to be created for that product to get into the market. Producers need incentives um, and these incentives can be different and I think it's quite important to keep in mind that obviously different producers need different kind of incentives. Incentives need to be targeted um, and uh, we need to keep in mind that there are different needs um, within the business community as well and uh, different trigger points how we can um, bring about the change. Hopefully the next phase is to introduce the bits that we're lacking from where we started. So that would include adding in stronger eco-design principles so that eco-design can really drive the transition and also looking at moving beyond recycling. Initially we started with a circular economy that required high levels of recycling and needed us to improve our recycling processes but the next stage will be to create an, um, a secondary raw materials market, a really robust secondary raw materials market and that's where hopefully the new circular economy package will head. We're going to adopt a second circular economy action plan in the coming months. The idea is to create the momentum for those companies and also to encourage all of them to, to move in that direction. We would need to encourage them to provide all information on the environmental impact of products with a view also to, com to make it the comparison between different products easier and to be able to reward the ones that are investing in, the, in sustainability choice. One of the biggest barriers to circle economy today is information transfer. The information does not flow across the value chain from the point when product is designed to the point when it goes to a consumer and to the point when it's, it is to be reused, uh, repaired, recycled. Sustainable choice should become the norm and not the exception anymore. And getting the price right for those products is also very important to guide the decision of all actors across the value chain. Thank you.